So we need to talk about the movie, Mary Kiss Cam. You've all seen Mary Kiss Cam, right? Well, if you're one of the unfortunate people who have not yet seen Mary Kiss Cam, it is currently streaming on Hulu and you can watch it over there. But just a quick plot summary of this movie, it's about this woman who's an artist and she goes to a bar she's never been to. She meets the owner of the bar. They end up going on a date to a hockey game of all things. And then during this hockey game, the kiss cam gets on them. And they're like, oh my God, what do we do? And they, they, they kiss for the kiss cam and that lets the hockey team win. And there just becomes this superstition that their kissing is why the hockey team wins. And it turns into all sorts of weird, superstitious rom-com shenanigans. So why am I here wanting to talk about some random hockey-based romantic comedy movie? Well, I am currently located in Duluth, Minnesota. And this movie takes place in Duluth, Minnesota. But unlike a bunch of other movies and films recently that have been set in Duluth, Mary Kiss Cam was actually filmed in Duluth. So this is, this, th this is kind of been a big deal for all the locals because normally when there's a scene that takes place here, like in Fargo, they just Photoshop some shit together of the lift bridge too close to where it shouldn't be and call it good. But we all see that and we go, no, that's not real. That's a lie. So instead, this time around, we all get to experience like the warm, tingly, fuzzy, warm hugging sensations that you get when you experience stuff from your real life in a movie. Like who here has not spent so many late nights sitting at this exact table? And who here hasn't ever had a conversation about Bob Dylan being from Duluth while dining on top of a rotating restaurant? And who amongst us hasn't ever eaten a handful of beautiful Duluth downtown snow off a mailbox? <laughs> d d don't eat downtown snow, please. Just, just don't do that. Oh, but alas. Alas? But alas. The Duluth within the Merry Kiss Cam cinematic universe is a little bit inconsistent with the real life Duluth. For example, for some reason, everyone in the movie seems to be obligated to wear a t-shirt repping some local business at least six days a week. You don't see it that often. I mean, people do wear t-shirts, but not every single day like in the movie. And apparently in this movie, there's this thriving art scene where like one old couple just buys everyone's artwork and keeps them all afloat for their entire career. And if if, if that actually exists in Duluth and you know about it, can, can you please get me hooked into that? Because that would be so much fun. And I hope that's not just a piece of fiction, okay? But judging by the comments as seen by the locals since this movie dropped, the biggest offense is that some of the geography they use in the movie just isn't the same as in real life. You see the bar they're in, and they say, let's go to the roof, and then they show up on the roof. That's not the roof of the same building! <laughs> Where she eats a fistful of Duluth's finest downtown white, and then takes a $6 cab ride to a bar she's never ever heard about or seen before? Oh, well in her life, it's just right around the corner from that scene. Heavens! Oh my God. Sorry, got, I got a little worked up there. Now, I personally don't think this discrepancy in real life geography matters one bit whatsoever. I'm willing to bet that people who live in bigger cities that have movies filmed in them all the time, see this phenomenon in like every movie made there and they just go, eh, movies, that's how it is, and move on and don't give a damn. It just happens that this is probably the first time for many of us in this region to actually see a movie depicted where we live, and so this, these discrepancies are probably a bit jarring because we're not used to it, even though we've seen it a thousand times in movies and never even noticed. For example, do you remember that other great Minnesota-based hockey movie, The Mighty Ducks? Of course you do. Somewhere in the middle of the Mighty Ducks, there's a montage scene where the whole team starts rollerblading around Minneapolis to pick up everyone in the team. And then they all get together and rollerblade around and woo, it's a good time. Well, you know what? 
somebody did, did the mapping in, of all the scenes they crossed in that movie and tallied up and they estimated that in real life, those mighty, those mighty, mighty ducks would have had to have rollerbladed around 43 miles in one day. Like, and they're like 12 year olds. Like, this is, that's, but I bet you watched that movie and you didn't even notice. I know I didn't, cause I wasn't from Minneapolis, but I do admit, I am kind of a fan of goofs and inconsistencies and whatnot in movies. Anytime I see a movie with a camera in it, with one, with one of these cameras in it, with, without a cabbage on it, and it's like, oh, this movie is set in 1932? Why, why is that camera they're using a model that was introduced in 1947? Ah, I got them real good. But it ultimately doesn't matter. But there were a few little different kind of flubs in the movie that I did appreciate for the sake of movie error magic. Like, when, when she gets out of the car and he's like, you're gonna freeze out there and all the trees are green because they had to shoot the scene in May. Mm. But you can appreciate little little goofs in movies without having it ruin the entire movie as far as I'm concerned. It's not like movie making is the easiest thing in the world. I can barely put together an eight minute video without screwing something up 25 times. Like I can't imagine having a whole crew of like how many dozens of hundreds of thousands, depending how big the movie is, people it takes to put this together to have everything just come out perfect seems like absolutely impossible, which is why like every movie on IMDb has the big list of little goofs and stuff, which are fun to go through. So they did the best they could with the budget they had. So, you know, we're not, we're not, they're not dogging on them for that. That's, but the reason, the, the reason I really wanted to make this video, there's one scene in this movie that's very dear to me because in this scene is proof that I, real world me, exists within the MKCCU. Watch. Where'd you want to meet uh, exceedingly early for dinner? That's strange. Did you see it? Watch again. Where'd you want to meet uh, exceedingly early for dinner? That's strange. Huh? Did you see it? Did you see it? One more time. Where'd you want to meet uh, exceedingly early for dinner? That trophy in the background? It's the sister of this trophy I'm holding right here in my hand right now. So back around 2007, the bar that ended up being the set in this movie was open for like a year at the time. And one of my friends and a couple other guys were like, let's get a bowling team together and go bowling every Wednesday. And we're like, yeah. So we like, what do we need to be in a bowling team? We need a sponsor. And we're like, let's go to that new bar and be there. We can see if they'll sponsor us. And they did. So we were the official Carmody bowling team for 2007, 2008. So we put this ragtag mighty ducks team of bowling anti all-stars together and crushed the league and then won the trophy the very first year that we uh, bowled for this bar sponsorship. So after we were awarded the trophies, what do we do? We gotta go to the bar and celebrate our win. So we went down there and like we had all these four trophies and we all signed one of them and left it with the bar. And then we did what every good championship team does. We disbanded and never bowled again. Well, Maybe some of the other guys did, but that was my last hoorah with league bowling. Because, do you know how tedious a full bowling league is? That stuff runs for like 30 weeks, from September till like April. It's like almost a full school year worth of bowling. Every week you gotta show up and pay your lane fees and buy a bunch of beer and buy more beer because if you don't buy beer for someone else and you're a not beer buying butthead and it just it racks up a lot of debt and especially when you're just brand new into the into the job scene and don't have much money it can be a little daunting and then oh so i got into league bowling because i grew up in a town with a population less of 700 and pretty much the only entertainment thing there was in the town was a bowling alley so just basically everybody bowled it wasn't it wasn't like you know, hardcore bowlers. It was just, it's what you did on Thursday nights. It was like a social event. You talk to everybody in the town and you, yay, throw some balls, drink some beer. It's just what you did. But then I move up to Duluth and it's like, oh, I guess I gotta keep doing what I always do. I gotta join a bowling league. And the thing is like, when you're in a town where there's things to do besides bowling, 
the people who join bowling leagues tend to be people who really just enjoy bowling for the sake of bowling. And that's really weird. Oh, I didn't really want to be a part of that anymore. It, they, they kind of scared me at times. So that was my time to retire. But now, my retirement from bowling is on the highest of high notes because that last season has landed me firmly within the Merry Kiss Cam cinematic universe. Oh, it took like 15 years for that one to hatch and I had no clue it was coming. But hot damn. Years from now when Merry Kiss Cam Civil War comes out and there's a scene where the art collector BB is in the bar just trashing the place and the bartender whose name I can't remember is like getting just smacked around by her, shit's flying everywhere. And he, she has him on the ground, she's just choking him. And he's like, this is it, this is the end of Mary Kiss Cam. And he like reaches up and pulls a trophy off of, from the debris that's fallen and they do a cinematic close up to show that it's now like his father's name instead of my teammate's name. And he's like, my father earned this trophy for the bar and it will has the power needed to end you and then smacks BB in a whole different dimension where there's no hockey or art. Then, only then will I concede that I am not part of the Merry Kiss Cam cinematic universe. Thank you. Oh my God. If you want more rom-com shenanigans with jars of secrets and demon eyes, this video is pretty epic. Otherwise, this video is what the algorithm thinks you might enjoy. You must watch at least one of them. Like and subscribe.